everyone, Michelle Seidling here with another episode of Food Experience Unplugged. Today, we'll explore achieving your dream life. Here to help us do that is Rochelle Marie Lawson. She is the queen of feeling fabulous and is a successful business owner, registered nurse, Ayurvedic health practitioner, international best-selling author, speaker, and radio show hostess. She assists women with creating and living their dream life by focusing on pillars of wellness, wisdom, and wealth. Please help me welcome Rochelle Marie Lawson. This podcast is available on multiple platforms, including YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and others. Please be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to be informed as new episodes become available. If you enjoyed today's episode or any of our episodes, please rate and review the podcast on your favorite platform. As always, check out our website at foodexperienceunplugged.com for some resources as you begin your health journey. Rochelle Marie Lawson, welcome to Food Experience Unplugged. I am so happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, It is a pleasure, Rochelle. You are the queen of feeling fabulous. We are so happy to have you on the show, and I look forward to hearing why the queen of feeling fabulous and what all of that means. Sure, I would love to. So I put on my glasses so I could really focus, Um, you know, how that goes. I may be pulling them on and off. So forgive me if you guys see that. Just That's just how the queen of feeling fabulous rolls. But my story is that Mm -hmm. um, a long time ago, three plus decades I uh, started a business, my first business, and it is in Silicon Valley, and it's in the telecommunications uh, arena, which is a subcontractor of um, construction industry. And the reason I started that business with my husband was because I could not get a job in Silicon Valley as an electrical engineer in the late 80s because I was the wrong gender. And so I... uh, interview with every major firm, corporation, still in existence today. And I would hear stories or they would tell me that we would love to have you. And we would, you did great. However, you got to be working around men that are your father's age. So until we can figure out how to make them comfortable, we'll call you back when that happens. Well, that never happened. And so me being me, I'm never going to give up on anything that I want to do and accomplish. So we started the business. But prior to me starting the business, I figured, oh, I need to go back and do something. So I went back to school and got a nursing degree and went sat for my state boards and became a registered nurse with the uh, specialty in emergency room trauma nursing and flight nursing. And so when I started the business, it was like... Uh, We need to have some kind of income just in case. So I would do the nursing at night and then the business during the day. And beautiful things happen when you're dedicated. And I I like to say I'm I'm a truly brave, bold, unstoppable girl. So I, uh, you know, continue working. And I love nursing, love, love, love taking care of my patients. I love the most critical people, the most traumatic cases. That's where I really um, have this essence and this gift and this intuitiveness about health and well-being and how to help people really step into reclaiming their health and well-being and helping them with all kinds of natural modalities that can assist them on their journey to recovering their health and well-being as it should be. But really passionate about that, but really passionate about um, just not giving up and being a good business owner. So I took that business and it became a top 50 women-owned business in Silicon Valley, still in existence today. And it is still a top 50 women-owned business in Silicon Valley. And it's been that since the millennial. So I'm very grateful to that. But on the other avenue, I um, started you know, my online business, Blissful Living for You. And that business is all about helping women and very smart men to unlock their bliss so that they can step into living the life of their dreams. And I do that by helping them to balance the pillars of wellness, wisdom, and wealth. And so this goes with how I became known as the queen of feeling fabulous. So back when I started that business, way back in 2008, the the online business was for living for you. um, I had started like going to conferences because business was completely different, you know, 2008 versus how it was in 1989. And so I started going to conferences and, you know, understanding a new way to do business. And people would come up to me and ask me, how, how are you? Not always say fabulous, because that's how I roll. I'm fabulous. I don't know what else to say. I've been fabulous since I was a little girl. And um, 
so in a 2011, um, a friend of mine was my mentor and, and uh, actually two ladies, two very powerful ladies. And they're like, you always say you feel fabulous. You look fabulous. You exude fabulousness. We just go call you the queen of feeling fabulous. And that's how that came about. And it's stuck. And <laughs> to this uh, day, I am known as the queen of feeling fabulous because I guess that's the essence I bring to all that I do, whether it's business or, you know, helping people with their health and well-being or helping them to step into living the life of their, their dreams. My goal, my, my, I guess, model is if you don't do it fabulously, why do it at all? So there you have it. Long and short <laughs> of it all. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow. Now, how is that you made that shift from engineering? to nursing and to other wellness topics. How was that, that shift? Had you always had that, that nursing or that wellness in you or how was, how did you make that, that uh, shift in careers? You know, I think um, I've always been a caretaker. Uh, I think it was something that was bestowed upon me when I was a little girl. And as I say, traveled down my path to bliss, it became more well-known or more recognized within me, but that I had a gift. And so it started when I was like eight years old and my brother, or probably younger than that, my brother had severe asthma. And so beyond my mom and my aunt, I was the only one that knew how to take care of him um, when he had an asthma attack. And I've always cobbled and took care of him and, and then just other people in my family. But I think really, I have a gift of intuitiveness. I'm very intuitive. And so it was easy for me to make the shift. For one, I grew up in a family of all boys. So that just felt natural to be an electrical engineer. I mean, I was smart. I didn't, and I'm not saying this to brag because I didn't realize it and didn't even claim it until a few years ago that I'm smart, but I was smart and um, things just came really easy to me. And so that's, you know, I was in Silicon Valley growing up. Come on, you, you got to be, you know, in the electronics industry, right? And of course, I wasn't going to be just a minion. I wanted to be the boss. So that's why I went after electrical engineering. But with regards to the well being aspect, I had a 17 year journey with my own health and well being that could not be diagnosed by the numerous doctors that I went to. And it wasn't until I became a nurse and started, had been doing things over a course of about 13, 12 or 13 years myself that I received this download when I was meditating and it all came into alignment for me. And it was very powerful because I was able to heal myself in nine months after suffering for 17 years and it was all holistic and it was all natural. So I realized I had this gift of receiving this information and what I would do is I would share it with my patients and um, and just share the wisdom and watch certain things happen when they were under my care. For instance, if they were having a heart attack or something, I would share meditate. We would do a meditation. We would do deep breathing. You know, of course, if they weren't critical, you know, on that critical aspect. And uh, I had these patients come back to me during my shift now, which was amazing because I worked 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. But I would have patients come back to me and say that what I shared with them completely changed their life and completely changed the state of their well-being for the betterment. And so I just think I have this gift. And the gift that I do have is I can see illness in people and I can know exactly where we need to hone in. So my physicians that I work with absolutely loved me because I really helped them to decipher some of these really complex cases uh, that they were puzzled by. And they would come ask me, what do you think? And I say, oh, it's this. And they're like, okay, let's go with what she's saying. And it would be 10 out of time times, it would be that. And I just think it's just because I've been bestowed with the gift of intuitiveness and being able to see people's challenges when it comes to well-being and to help them to facilitate transformations to, to become that healthy, whole, and well person. So um, very interesting. Um, I think it's just the electrical engineering side strokes the male side of me and the nursing and being that care, compassionate uh, person strokes the female side of me. So I get to both the best worlds. I just say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That is fantastic. As you were getting your nursing, your wellness expertise, you were going to be helping yourself as well as helping others. How does that, how did you feel at that point when you were kind of realizing your different talents, your different skill sets? Well, you know, what's funny is I never uh, I never thought that it was anything special. I thought I just was, you know, smart and, and, and intuitive. I always knew I was intuitive, but I didn't think it was anything special. I thought everybody had this gift, to be honest. And um, when it came to realization for me that 
things are just, I'm on a little bit of a different trajectory. I mean, I've always been that girl, like, oh my gosh, here she comes with her stuff, right? Growing up, you know, I'm always was taking care of people. Like we play baseball or football or something. And I'm like, oh, you, come here, let me, oh, I think you broke it. Or, you know, and sure enough, or I think you need stitches or, you know, they go to their parents like, and they would be like, how did you know? I'm like, I don't know. It just looked like they did. Right. But um, I think as I grew up and, and, and really developed my skills as a healthcare professional in the arena of emergency room trauma nursing, um, I really probably 10 years into doing that, realized that there's something special within me. And I still didn't know what it was. I didn't even tie it into being intuitive. I just knew that there was something special and I had a gift where I could see things that weren't really relevant or prevalent to other people. And I think for me, I began to grasp that. And as I grasped that, the more I was able to help the physicians um, make the decisions that we needed to make to, you know, help people uh, in the best capacity that we could. So even today, I still think I'm just regular old Rochelle Marie. You know, I'm just regular old Rochelle Marie. I have some talents um, that have been bestowed upon me, but by no means do I think I'm special. I just think that the divine has bestowed this information on me to share it with those that are open to receive. And not everyone is open to receive, but those that are, that are, have a tremendous transformation experience that happens. And it's not me. I'm just the conduit for the divine's information to flow through me. And that's how I see it. Mm, amazing. Now, now using with those talents and you help people to live their dream life. Is that, does that involve discovery of their talents or how do you, how do you help them to create their dream life? So, um, Yes, I do help people. As I say, I'm a transformation facilitator. So I help them to transform and facilitate the changes in their life that's necessary for them to live their dream life. And the most important thing that I start with is focusing on their health and well-being. Because without that, we can't live the life of our dreams. I don't care how much money you have, you can't live the life of your dreams. And I had a patient, a very influential patient, um, that has gone on, passed on, so to speak. And we all know this man, um, technology is used all over the world. Um, but he told me, I had him twice. And he told me that uh, if he could be as healthy and radiant as me, he would give me all his money. But at the time it was too late. And he said, if I would have just had someone in my life like you that would have been able to guide me with my health and well-being." I don't think I would be in the state that I'm in today. And that really stuck and resonated with me. I mean, I bonded with this gentleman because I had him as a patient twice. Um, but what he said was just something that stuck with me. And I believe that it's very important. This man had more money than than God, so to speak. It was, he was before Jeff Bezos was Jeff Bezos, right? And uh, for him to tell me that his health and well-being was way more important than the wealth that he had, because even though he had the wealth, he couldn't buy his health. And that is key. And I, so I share that with people. A lot of times people think they're really in a state of well-being. But my thing is, if you're on any kind of medication um, or you're having any challenges with your health and well-being, whether you want to recognize it, own it, or deny it, it's something that needs to be dealt with because you can't go forward and live in the life of your dreams if you have issues with your mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual well-being. And so we tackle those first and I really dig deep into um, helping those to identify their true challenges so that we can help them transform into a better place so that they can step into uh, living the life of their dreams with complete health and well-being. Mm, okay. So do you, so you start with the wellness portion. Yes. Now it, in terms of when you first meet with them, or do you discuss all of their goals and dreams and how to get there? Or do you just focus, okay, let's talk about wellness. We'll talk about the rest later. So I break it down into the three pillars, but the first one we start with is what do you envision as your dream state of your health and well-being? Mm -hmm. I have to start there first because again, if I start with the wealth, it, it doesn't work. And of course it goes in conjunction with the whole wisdom or mindset. You know, what do you, if your mind is not right, if you don't, if you're not ready to receive the wisdom or are open to wisdom, then you can't transform your health and well-being no matter what. And you definitely can own and build and sustain your wealth so that you can step into your dream life. So I really do dig deep in, in the component of 
working or identifying the blocks that they have with their well-being, I do tackle into a little bit or dive into a little bit of the mindset as well. Because it doesn't make sense to work with somebody that's not really ready to see the challenges or the blocks that may be preventing them from living the life of their dreams when it comes to their health and well-being. So start there right away. And then that opens up a world of information. And it's really surprising to people when we start diving in um, of things that they didn't realize was blocking them from having that health and well-being or blocking them from living life in their dreams because it, it's it's their health and well-being that's not balanced. And so it's, it's very interesting. I love it because, again, that must be the male side, the engineering side, the analytical side, right? Um, I love it because I love seeing them um, open up. The expression on their faces when this happens is amazing. And when things open up for clarity for them, it's it's just a beautiful, it's like seeing that mom that just went through that 36 hours of labor and seeing that beautiful baby, you know, two seconds before that baby popped out, she was, oh, you know, just intense, right? And then that baby pops out and there's just this beauty, this glow, this opening, this, this love, this, you know, for this, this beautiful baby. And it's the same thing when people um, realize that they've been blocking themselves by not taking care of their health and well-being and they discover the blocks that have prevent them from having health and well-being. It's amazing. It's just a beautiful, that's the best analogy <laughs> that I can give is the, the baby. <laughs> oh, well, Almost like birth of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you have some examples of how people have made that shift in mindset to be able to focus on the first, the wellness and then the, re- the other pillars? Yeah. So an example, some examples are, um, here's a good one, and and this has happened quite a bit. Um, someone that has uh, challenges with their blood pressure, and they are on one, two, multiple medications, and they still have the blood pressure, high blood pressure issues, or challenges with their blood pressure. So a lot of times, um, it could be related to the physical aspect of the body responding to something else, um, or it could be related to some external stress that is causing internal stress that they don't even recognize or realize. So when I dive into that, I ask them the question is, why would you continue to take medication and still have the same problem? You go to your doctor, they're giving you the same prescription that they give the other thousand patients that they deal with, with the same issue. Um, But yet you're taking one, two, three medications, you still have this issue. There might be something else going on. Um, Let's dive in and see what's happening, happening external of you that might be causing these physical uh, un- imbalances happening within your body. And so a lot of times what people don't realize is here's a, here's a, this is, this is golden, golden. Are you stressed? No, I'm not stressed. Oh, really? Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's dive into that. Right. I don't have any stress in my life. Okay. Really? And so we start diving into it and they find out and they realize they're extremely stressed, but they've been operating that way for so long that it's just become a natural thing for them. And they just don't realize. It's like when you, you know, go to put on your sock, if you're right-handed or you tend to put on the right sock first or the left sock, but you know, but you've been doing it for so long that you don't know that if you switch things up, it can open up a whole new world for you. And so that is, that is one of the major things. And so once we identify, okay, yeah, you're stressed now, this is some of the things that may be happening. Let's work on these things and let's see what happens with your blood pressure. And lo and behold, they will be able to, and you know, not everybody, because other people might, people, some people might have other issues that is affecting their blood pressure, like kidneys or things of that nature. But nine times out of 10, if it's stress related, that's affecting their internal physical aspects within their body, whether it's the digestive system, cardiovascular, respiratory system, um, once they discover and identify these things that are causing these external things to affect them internally, Mm -hmm. it's amazing the change begins to happen and it happens pretty rapidly because you're actually taking care of the root cause of this physical aspect that has manifested within you. And so it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's just, again, it's like having that baby. I, that, I'm stuck with a baby <laughs> and I'm not, I'm definitely not having any babies, but I mean, it's just a beautiful thing to see. It's almost like 
you know, we've been going through COVID and it's almost like the people that have been in the hospital and have been intubated or on a res- put on a respirator and um, they've struggled and they've fought and they've gotten through it. And then they, you know, get better. They get get extubated off the respirator and they start making these progresses and eventually they get discharged from the hospital and they realize, oh my gosh, you know, I've gone through this tremendous journey. What have I learned? What can I do better to make sure that I stay in a healthy state and, and really protecting all my health and well-being? Unfortunately, for some of us, we don't recognize that we need to make changes, external, internal, um, until sometimes it's too late. And so my thing is, let's not wait till it's too late. Let's start today. Any little thing that you can do will be better for your body. I don't care if it's just going outside and taking a walk when you're feeling like you want to punch the wall because your employee (laughs) or your coworker or whatever just really pissed you off. Go take that walk because nine times out of 10, you will come back and you will feel completely different. You'll feel more balanced. You won't feel impulsive to say the wrong things. You, your blood pressure will decrease. Your <laughs> heart rate will slow. Your respiratory rate will slow. And you'll be able to take in good oxygen versus, you know, the shallow breathing that happens when you get to that point. So it's, it's just a, uh, it's just a beautiful, it's or like, you know, Hey, you stress, go get a nice massage. Your body loves it. And you feel amazing. And if you're like me, when you get a massage, you never want to get up off the table because <laughs> it seems like it's too short. Even if it's a two hour massage, it's too <laughs> short, but you feel amazing and you feel in a much different state than when you went in for that massage. So. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I love the examples. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, how does that how do you move from one pillar to another? Is it a gradual thing? Do you work on, do you have to get to a certain point in each pillar? How does that, that progression happen? So with the wellness, of course, we start with there first. Um, once we've identified the things that are blocking their bliss, so to speak, when it comes to that pillar of wellness, then we can begin to work on those and, and make the changes that are necessary. And I never move anyone faster than they they're ready for. So some people think they're ready right away. And it's like, no, we need to make sure this is ingrained. I need to make sure that the processes that we put in place have become regular for you, almost as like you're breathing. You don't think about it. You just begin to act and do it because you feel good. And the more you feel good, the better you want it, the more you want to do it. And so it's a gradual process with the mindset or the wisdom As that person begins to make these changes and we identify the blocks in the mind that might be preventing them from moving forward or allowing them, so to speak, to backslide a bit and keep this repetitive thing going on, then we can work on those aspects as well. And the two, wellness and wisdom, kind of go hand in hand. Because if you, again, if your mind is not right, if you're not open to receive and understand that you need to make some changes in your well-being, then it's just not going to work. And so I take that and we go gradually hand in hand. And then once we have balance in those two areas where I'm comfortable, they're comfortable, then we can go into the pillar of well. And that's usually most often, 99% of the time, the last pillar that we address, because now you're in a right state of well-being. Your mindset is right. You've got wisdom. You, you understand the processes that the ebb and flow between the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. There's a there's a very tight connection. It's like the atoms, you know, the, the, there's a very tight connection to all the, the atoms that make up us in this, this universe. Right. And so once they have that, then they can begin grasping and understanding how they can transform their wealth, their state of wealth, um, and make it successful. They can build it, they can sustain it and they can grow it. The thing about wealth is it's funny. Wealth means different things to different people. So once we've got the pillars of wellness and wisdom balance, there's a whole diving as to what does wealth mean to you? For me, wealth might I mean, being able to buy a hundred pair of shoes I like, you know, I'm just, I'm just using that as an example, not that, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, buying a new BMW or something like that. That means, you know, for other people, wealth means, might mean just being able to spend more time with their family, their loving family, or, you know, being able to donate their time to providing for the homeless. That's, you know, to some people that's wealth because they're able to give in a capacity unconditionally. I mean, of course, there's always the materialistic stuff that people, you know, I want more money in the bank. I want more clients. I want, you know, I want that house in the Caribbean paid for, and I want the house in the mountain, you know, I want to have five houses and I'm going to be able to travel the world, you know, you know, so it's really an an identification of what exactly wealth means to them that they feel will allow them to step into living their life of their dreams. And, and uh, the wonderful thing is living the life of our dreams is all about our purpose 
and mm-hmm. and what we're here for. So again, when we get to that wealth component, some people are focused on their business. Some people are focused on their family. Some people are focused on things external of them. And some people are focused on material things. And some people are focused on all of that. But it really is, what are you passionate about? And what's your purpose? And how does your purpose play into you having that life of your dreams and connects to the wellness and wisdom that's being bestowed upon you and that you've worked so hard or you're working hard to obtain? So, Okay. Now, is there, do you address purpose in each of those pillars? Yes. Yes. Because without, the purpose is like the targeted goal. It's like having that dartboard and it being the bullseye. Everything emanates from your purpose. So if your purpose is, I'm going to say this one, ladies, if your purpose is to lose weight, you know, um, get that high school body back or whatever, if that's your purpose, we're going to work on it. But with, in regards to that, there are other things that are blocking you from having that high school body, so to speak. So we have, we, I definitely have to extrapolate what is the purpose. If your purpose is because you want to get, I don't know, you want to attract a man or, you know, and it's not really about you, it's external of you, then we have to do some work because that's where the mindset comes in. We have to identify why would you place your purpose external of you on something that you have no control over. Your purpose is something that you have control over. It's your God-given gift. It's when we embrace our purpose, understand, identify truly what's in the essence of our heart, that we can move forward to creating that purpose and making it and being passionate about it and having it become a reality in our life. If you're doing something to please someone else and you say that's your purpose, it's never, ever going to work. Never, ever going to work. And you won't, you won't see the results. You won't see any changes and you'll stay stagnant and stuck. And we know what happens when things get stagnant and stuck, they begin to die. And I don't want that for anybody. Sure. Now at what point can or do your clients say, okay, I have the life of my dreams. Um, it's generally towards about the, uh, the, I want to say the third, I don't know, I don't want to say pillar, but the third segment, which we've moved into the well, you know, they're seeing their, their wellness good, their mindset is good. They see a completely different person. It's like, um, you know, the ugly duckling that manifests into the beautiful swan. You know, they started out as the ugly duckling and now they've manifested into this beautiful swan and they have this essence and they feel that everything is in alignment with their lives as it should be. And they are no longer blocking their bliss, but they are, they have unlocked their bliss. And it's mm-hmm. generally within that, definitely the third pillar when we get to wealth. And, um, and this generally takes, depending on what the person wants to do, um, generally for me, it takes my series working directly one-on-one with me in that capacity is nine months because I want people to be able to embrace the changes and not think, okay, I made this change. Let me move on. And then forget about doing the things that helped them to get to this place of change and this transformation. So for me, definitely it's a nine month process. It can go longer if the person wants, um, if they feel, but generally by that eighth or ninth month, they begin to realize that they're looking in the mirror at this beautiful swan that was once this ugly duckling. And this beautiful swan is radiant, glowing, uh, energetic, you know, vibrant, and exudes love, caring, compassion in all aspects of wellness, wisdom, and wealth. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, transformation to see within people. But like I say, I just help them facilitate the transformation. They really do all the work. Sure. Now, what... um... As they themselves like reflect back on, okay, here's when, when you, when they first started working with you and then they, they, okay, they've got their dream life. What are their thoughts or impressions or feelings that of their own progression, how they've moved through the process? So they feel really good because sometimes they don't, in the beginning, don't even, they can't see the end because they are so buried under all the stuff that's preventing them, that's blocking them. And they don't, they can't see the blocks. So as they make this transformation, so to speak, and they get to the end, of course, they think I'm fabulous, (laughs) you know, and I have to tell them that I didn't do anything. I was just a conduit of information to reflect the mirror of what you're seeing and what you want back to you so that you could see clearly. Um, I would, I just gave you the blueprint. You have to actually build. It's like, I'm the blueprint for a house. I can provide the blueprint, but if you never take the time to build anything, it's just a blueprint. So I provide the blueprint for you, but you actually did the construction of this beautiful palace of yourself. And, uh, and I'm always grateful because they always say it's me. I, you know, I, you, Rochelle Marie. And I'm like, no, it was you. 
I just help guide you to see things that you couldn't see. It's like having, I'm going to say freckle instead of, a burger, <laughs> but having on my, this freckle on the end of my nose, I can't always see it. Now, unless I look in the mirror and I truly focus on it because I have freckles on my face, but you can see it and you can say, you know, Rochelle Marie, that freckle on your nose is really pretty. It's really beautiful. And I'm like, really? That's what people like. It's they get to this part and they're like, I can see the beautiful swan now. I couldn't see it before. I didn't even know it existed. And now I can see it. And they're, they're just very grateful. And it's funny because I've had people that have, interestingly enough, gone through this process and became a beautiful swan only to go back and start manifesting um, the ugly duckling syndrome. And they come back and they're like, I need your help. I need your help. And of course, that's a short, <laughs> quick course and fix. But, but it's like, uh, I'm here. I'm here. This is what I'm meant to do. And I love, um, I love seeing people. Uh, transform into that beautiful essence that they're truly meant to be. And so to me, it's a gift that they trust me. And for them, they think I'm a gift because I, I help them transform and it, it's just beautiful all the way around. So. Oh, fantastic. Now for people just getting started, what is the, the first step in really moving toward their dream life? So the people first get started, first, you need to see someone like me. <laughs> and here's what I'm going to share um, with all of you. I practice everything I do is holistic. I uh, utilize the holistic principles of Ayurveda. That's the discipline that allowed me to heal myself after suffering for 17 years, even though I didn't even know what it was at that time. Um, but we are all unique individuals. We are all unique individuals and we need to be treated in the state of our uniqueness that we are. So with me, everybody has a unique plan. I identify basically what their body type is or dosha in Ayurveda is. And then, and only then can I begin to create this blueprint for them to follow that will help them to unlock their bliss. So the first thing is you've got to have a consultation um, with me so we can identify what your dosha is, what your true state of essence is at the moment of conception. And that's the beautiful thing about Ayurveda and your dosha is your dosha is determined at the moment of conception. So the moment that little egg says yes to that little sperm, that's when you, your essence, your unique essence is created. So people could have all kinds of challenges that are the same, but that doesn't mean that they got there the same way because we're all unique. So everything is unique uh, with regards to what I do and how I work with the individuals and yeah. It, so it starts with, you know, having a, a consultation and allowing me to assess you and create this beautiful blueprint. But not only that, to open up to you and sharing with you your uniqueness on this planet. No one can do what you do like you do on this planet. They could be doing the same exact thing that you do, but they can't do it like you because you are a unique gift to the world. My goodness, that is amazing. Rochelle, are you living your dream life? And how are you living your dream life? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I'm living my dream life. I'm healthy. Uh, you know, I um, I have a good mindset. Uh, of course, everyone has challenges throughout the day, but, you know, or throughout their lives. But um, I have a good mindset and I have built to sustain the wealth. And so I'm able to do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it. I have these two businesses that are run, but I could be anywhere in the world and run these businesses because I've set things up that way. Um, you know, healthy. I, uh, I have radiance, I think, and I definitely have energy. I'm trying to keep it toned down for the show, but <laughs> definitely energy. And uh, I just feel blessed and, and I've discovered my purpose. I own it. I embrace it. I acknowledge it. I acknowledge the fact that I've been bestowed with the gift of intuition and being really intuitive and being able to hold on, hold in on things, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or whether it's business, health, and wealth. Um, I'm able to decipher those things. They just come to me. Um, and so, yes, I'm definitely living the life of my dreams. I travel. I, my kids are grown and they're doing, everybody in my family's doing well. And I just feel really blessed to uh, be able to share and have this conversation with you. Uh, I would, we appreciate your being on the podcast today and, and your energy. I love it. Please keep it here. <laughs> uh, sure. I don't want to laugh. I'm going to tell you, at the, if you're somewhere in the middle of your day, you've watching this or you haven't listening to us have this conversation or even you yourself and you're like, oh, I got a burst of energy like I had a jolt of caffeine. That's just me. <laughs> That's just me <laughs> sending you something, some good energy um, so that you can just flow flawlessly down your path <laughs> during the day. 
Absolutely. Well, Rochelle, how can people get in contact with you? They can get in contact with me every way possible. So, of course, social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, I have a podcast myself. They can go to my website, Blissful Living, the number four, the letter U dot com. And I highly suggest people go there because everything about Rochelle Marie is there and what I do. Um, they can get free gifts. They can do a mini um, dosha or body type quiz and, you know, kind of see where they fall into with that. Um, they can listen to my podcast, see what events I'm having see what things I'm up to, get access to the books I've written. Um, so definitely go into my website, Blissful Living, the number four in the letter U.com. But of course, I'm all over social media. So if you can't find me, you're not looking very hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, we will include all of those things in the show notes. And Rochelle, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you for all that you do as the queen of feeling fabulous and helping others to feel fabulous too. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure um, sharing this and just having this conversation with you and looking at your beautiful radiant smile, which has made me just like, <laughs> you smile. So thank you so much. And thank you for all that you're doing to get people who like me message out to the world. Um, the more we can do that, the better we can heal our society and, and have it in a much better, better place. So thank you so much for the work that you do. You're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs>